Hi guys and welcome to the uh, Ask TMK Answers video. Um, first I want to thank everyone for uh, getting on board and um, last time I looked I had something like 144 comments. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, hi guys and uh, 153 comments. So yeah, thanks to everyone. Um, for submitting your questions. Um, I said I'd answer 10 questions um, on the first video. I'm going to make it 15. I've picked um, I picked pretty much all the questions out. I think I had about 40 out of that 150 comments. So um, Some people said things that weren't really questions. Like, I don't know, like... Uh, I can't even think of anything. It was like strange stuff like... Um... um I like a Mac, or something, you know, something like that that wasn't a question, you know, and, but yeah, a lot of people ask, you know, decent questions too, so, yeah, I picked out like 36 of the best questions, and then I narrowed that down to 15, so, here we go, um, if I don't ans answer your question, you can submit it again in the next, um, the next video, just wait for the next one that says, uh, Ask TMK Video 2. Because, um, don't put the questions here because it's just going to get, I don't know, it'll get muddled up, so. Alright, first question is from S92Chicken, uh, Shang Tsung or Shinnok. Now, I assume you mean who I like better, obviously. And the thing is with Shang Tsung and, and Shinnok is there's a, uh, a technical, a technicality between those two characters. See, Shang Tsung's my favourite. Bottom line, uh, he changes his appearance, his moves, uh, everything when he morphs. But the thing is, once they reached uh, MK4, um, it became harder and harder to pull all that information off to do that morphing. Uh, in the game, when when a character changes into another character, that means they have to load up all the images associated with the new character and load those up and put them into memory and load up sounds and do all that and unfortunately they can't just do it like that <laughs> that's the problem so um, I mean but they can with things like if you played Ultimate MK on DS you know Shang Tsung morphs instantaneously because it's like a flash cartridge and it is instantaneous but the thing is you know all the new consoles they're all DVD so it's got a it's got to load it off the disc and you know it it makes the game stop even for like a second you know people don't like it so Midway's solution to that, even though Shinnok was introduced in arcade, was um, impersonations, they called them, where Shinnok would just go Sub-Zero, and he wouldn't change, but he'd suddenly have Sub-Zero's abilities, which was sort of cool. I think Shinnok was an awesome character, he looked good, and he had a, a good story, it's just that it didn't sit well with fans, because they went from Shang Tsung to Shinnok, you know, and suddenly Shang Tsung can change and, and change his appearance, he can change into the person, and Shinnok just says, Sub-Zero, you know, it just didn't, it just wasn't hard-hitting enough for, for fans to get on board, and a lot of people didn't like it, they didn't think it was boss material, but in all honesty, um, he's a, I think he was a good boss, um, just for the fact that he didn't have the cheapness that all the other bosses have, so, so yeah, I'll say uh, Shang Tsung, and hopefully, you know, in the future, you know, because flush cartridges are so cheap and they're coming down. I'm hoping like all the consoles of the future are going to go back to being cartridge based. Um, that's something that I'd like to see actually. I think cartridges are better, they last longer, they don't scratch. Um, instantaneous loading, you know, everything's a plus. It, it was just that back then they were so expensive to make, but now they're dirt cheap. So, you know, Shang Tsung. <laughs> um, hmm really hot here today by the way it's like 41 degrees Celsius outside all the air conditioners are on and I'm still hot <sighs> okay question number two from weather goddess um, hoping that the next MK title gets to see the light of day given Midway's financial crisis if Boone's words hold true and the slate is wiped clean and the only handful of MK warriors from past games 
survive the supposed Armageddon. Which characters would you personally like to see return? And which characters do you feel should officially kick the bucket and make some space for new warriors? That's a really good question. Um, and it's a really hard one too. I mean, because like, thinking about Armageddon, um, that was the high point of MK. That The roster was up to 64 characters, you know, so... Um, the, I can tell you right now the three characters I despise and will gladly, um, would love to see kick the bucket, disappear and never fucking come back again are Kai, Dairu, I hate Dairu, and Mocap. I understand the Mocap thing was a joke and that, he's not really a real character, that was just a, a sort of a gag thing they did, that's fine, but I really fucking hate Dairu. <laughs> Oh man, he's one of the only things I hate about Deception. I just, I just don't get what with that character. I didn't like his look. I hated his story. His moves were cheap and annoying, and there was just nothing I liked about him. Nothing at all, you know. So I can tell you right now, I'd love to see those characters go. Um, characters that I think should definitely stay are always going to be, you know, Scorpion, Sub Zero. Um, with the, with the female characters, I guess you're always going to have Kitana Molina. And with the sorcery characters, you're always going to have, you know, Shang Tsung, Shao Kahn, and, and um, Quan Chi. Um, see, the characters are so tied together. Even, even the cyber characters, like Sector Cyrax and Smoke, you know. Um, I believe a good storyline would be to um, kill off Smoke. Ooh, I can feel a burn from all the Smoke characters right now. Um, I've never been a big Smoke fan, because, you know, he copied all Scorpion's moves, and that didn't sit good with me. And, um, you know, he had the teleport punch, which is really Sector's move, and he had a harpoon, even though it looked different, it was the same, and then he just had his own combos, so, you know, I never really, I wasn't, I liked MK2 Smoke, but even him, he was a copy, he just had the speed, you know, Smoke's always been a copy of Scorpion, so I've never really liked that about him. So I'd like to see Smoke uh, either get killed off or, or changed into someone different, um, a, a cyber with different abilities. Um, they had this, this rumor character once called Hydro, and uh, he could shoot, I don't know, water balls out of his, out his chest or something. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that would be cool. Bring back some of the Cybers, Sector Cyrax, and maybe change Smoke into someone else. Um, as for everyone else, I mean, there's so many characters. Um, underrated characters, I believe Nitara is one of the top underrated characters, and she's one of my favourite female characters. I think she looked really awesome in Deadly Alliance. She had a really nice character design, and the modelling on her was really good. She had good moves, good abilities, a good storyline. Um, I, I just think it was sort of unfair that she didn't get to really come back other than Armageddon, you know, everyone just came back. Um, yeah. So, who else can we talk about? Uh, Liu Kang. I'd like to see Liu Kang stay as a zombie. A lot of people know this, I always say this. Um... I believe that you can only have him the good guy champion so many times without that becoming very tired. And um, Mortal Kombat 1, 2, 3 did that for me. It made me so tired of Liu Kang. And then uh, when he... Oh, Mortal Kombat 1, 2, 3, 4, sorry. When he got killed in Deadly Alliance, I was like, Yeah! You did that! That sucks shit! You know, I thought that was awesome. And then when they brought him back in Deception as a zombie, I thought that's even better. And he was, like, separated into two beings, like, you know, zombie spirit and Liu Kang body. And I just thought it progressed so well. And it made me forget about this good guy champion thing that they built up over four games. You know, and I thought, oh, this is cool. Liu Kang is going all, you know, hardcore and possessed and shit now. And, um, yeah, and then uh, they made him good again. I think he should have stayed a zombie. I really do. They could have done so much with him as a zombie. He just looks so much more awesome, too. He wasn't just a buff guy with a headband. He had chains and his eye was hanging out. Oh, it was so cool. Anyway, yeah, i got to stop rambling. We're going to through all these questions. Shit. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, it's really hard to say out of the 64 roster, but that, that gives you a bit of an idea of what I think. And um, 
Yeah, oh, Raiden. Raiden should also come back. Or, Raiden should always be in the game, because he's a god. Uh, okay, next question. Uh, Hansi WTF. <laughs> what was your most shocking fatality move you ever ever seen? When you thought, what the fuck? How extreme. And how are you looking at the fatalities now? Uh, I can answer that quite easily, actually. The first time I saw Mortal Kombat, my cousin, you've probably heard me tell this story in the other video, he pulls me over, he shows me Sub-Zero's fatality, and I was like, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I think I even said the game should be banned, you know. Um, that was pretty shocking for me, but after I got over that, like after I was into the MK thing, um, there was only one other fatality that really shocked me, and it's my favourite till, till today, and that's Scorpion's Mortal Kombat 2 fatality, where he pulls out the harpoon and he cuts their throat. He cuts their throat, and then he cuts them in half, man. That's full on. I mean, why does he cut their throat for? If he's going to cut them in half anyway. It's just, it's just, I saw that, and I go, man, that's fucking brutal. <laughs> and yeah, that's definitely one of my fatalities today. And the end of your question, you say, how are you looking at the fatalities now? Or how are you looking at that fatality now? Um, I still think it's brutal. Um, I'm not over it. I've seen all the other ones, you know. I just think... The fact that he cuts their throat first it, and then cuts them in half, like, if he just cut them in half, he would just be killing them and I'd be like, eh. But, like, it's it's more than that because he, 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 in a sense, he tortures them by cutting their throat first and then cutting them in half. So it's one of the only fatalities that's really, like, torturous before he kills them. So, definitely Mortal Kombat 2, Scorpions, whole high punch, down, forward, forward, release. Down, forward, forward, forward. Okay. Um... Next question, question number four. Dead One DBZ, where and when did you come up with the name TMK? Ah, it was September 1999. Um, my website was just my own personal homepage with a lot of random shit on it. <laughs> it. It's a fucking mess. I've got bits and pieces of it left, but I don't have it in its entirety. But um, it was just called Luke's Homepage, and it had all these Ultimate MK3 pictures on it, and then it had Command and Conquer pictures on it, and then it um, had... Uh, random shit all over it. it just it was a fucking mess it was, the colors were really bad and ugh. um then you know the ultimate mortal kombat pictures got became real popular and i decided to sort of focus more on mortal kombat i had sounds and stuff on there too and so i came up with a name because i was noticing all websites had a name for themselves all the mortal kombat had, sites had names you know there was like mk nightmares and mkne and and uh, the Realm Mortal Kombat and Outworld and all the old school ones, Planet MK uh, and uh, MK5.org even, even though those guys suck now. Um, so I decided to come up with a name and I'm like, oh, and a lot of them are taken, you know, and then I, I just thought up Total Mortal Kombat. I was like, you know, put Total in front of it, just be about everything Mortal Kombat, you know, just be full on, you know. And I searched the internet, and there was no Total Mortal Kombat. That was it. Total Mortal Kombat. From then on, I just pushed the name and and built up the website. And now it's really big. And I have you guys to thank for that, too. Um, next question. Question number five. Nintendo Genius asks, asks, Do you think they should remake Shaolin Monks? Oh, do you think they should make a remake of Shaolin Monks? And another thing, where did you get the money to buy all the cool stuff? Uh, no, I don't think they should remake Shaolin Monks. I loved it how it was. It was done really well. Uh, they should definitely make a sequel. I think all the fans want one. I even told Hector E3. I was surprised to hear you say, you know, if we wanted a Shaolin Monks sequel. Of course we want one. It was a really good game. And, um, yeah. I would love to see a sequel for Shaolin Monks. Um... Apparently there's something in the works, an adventure game at Midway, you know, no one knows what. I've tried to ask, they haven't answered my email, so I know they probably don't like me asking, but screw them! <laughs> I'm going to ask anyway. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, uh, where do I get the money to buy my cool stuff? Just jobs over the years, um, you know, spare cash, whatever, you know. Um, I've got, someone's asked me what I do for a living, a few questions now, and I'll answer that in a minute, but yeah, just, just money, <laughs> just, just work, you know. Um, question six, 
Uh, Sub Cyber ninety nine asks, if you could change anything about Mortal Kombat, what would it be? Oh man, that's really hard. Um, I've always got ideas for the next Mortal Kombat after I play the current one. I always think, oh, okay, they did that, and now it's time to do this. Um, I think the one thing I'd change is I found that in Mortal Kombat 1 and 2 and 3 and that, um, though the bosses were cheap, um, you know, like, Kintaro was cheap. He was beatable. There was a way to do it, you know. But it, those moves were cheap in a different way than the, th the moves are on the 3D characters now, like, like, Kintaro would jump, and it would give you a sec to get out of the way, right? Or he'd do the fireballs, and you'd have a chance to duck, unless you're in the air, then you take the hit, right? In, in the newer ones, like Moloch, and Onaga, and, um, I think even Blaze do it, they, they have this move where they just go, they just back off, and it makes, like, this wind blast, and that, like, hurts you, or... Even when you're, like, right across the screen. And I'm like, that's fucking bullshit, man. Here's Scorpion, all fucking buffing that. And you're telling me that a gust of wind takes damage off him? I'm sorry. You know, if he wants to have a back out move, fair enough. But I don't want it taking energy off my character. That's bullshit, man. And it's just super cheap. And that's one thing I'd remove from Mortal Kombat, definitely. Just that real cheapness where they're able to create a shockwave instantaneously or back out of a, an attack like that. You know, it's just, it just makes those bosses way too cheap. And that is something I definitely remove from the game. It's, all, it's enough that they're already already tough and do superhuman damage, but giving them an escape move, an instantaneous escape move, that actually hurts you as well? No. That's what I change. Um, okay, Pack RH asks, what do I do for a living? Man, I think this was the most asked question. People even came to my chat room and wanted to know. I didn't tell anyone in the chat room. I said I'd answer it on the video. So, um, I've had various jobs over the years. Um, I wasn't that great at school. Uh, I didn't go, I didn't go all the way through. I got out at year 10 and, and I went back and sort of did some year 10 subjects and I have year 10 like English math science equivalencies and that, but I haven't got 